morning, Light Spring Chapel. Welcome to yet another day where we are glad to welcome you all to a day where we can worship God and praise his mighty name. For those who are joining us on Zoom, Karibu Sana, and those on Facebook, Karibu Chana Sana. Uh, this is Life Stream Chapel, where, where we are a community transformed by Christ, transforming our world with Christ. I'd like to welcome you all to this time of worship as a start of today's service. Pray that you may all be able to connect, not just uh, with God, but even with each other through prayer and through worship of God. Thank you very much. And let's uh, sit back. Let's um, sit back and even enjoy this type of worship together. Praise the Lord, Church. Uh, it's another opportunity that the Lord has given us, another day that we rejoice and be glad in you know, and it, for it is a day that the Lord has made. Um, I welcome you to a session of worship as we just give the glory to the God who is enthroned high above all and to the Lamb who is worthy to open the seals. So welcome guys and uh, please sing along. Let's worship together and feel free to pray to ask God to lead you. So Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have made, that we may rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the opportunity you've given us, Lord, to reach out to each other through this forum, this online forum. We just say thank you. Even as you worship you today, Lord, may you receive glory, may you receive honor. May you, O oh God, find um, our praise and our worship, O oh God, as a sweet aroma and pleasing unto you. Be glorified and be magnified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 You are holy. Holy, you are holy. We sing together. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. Holy, you are holy. Lamb of God. Lamb of God. Seated at the right hand of the Father. You are holy. Holy, you are holy, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, holy, you are holy, Jesus, you are worthy, we say you are worthy. Worthy you are worthy to receive honor, Lord. You are worthy. Worthy you are worthy, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Seated at the right hand of the Father, you are worthy. Worthy you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy. Worthy you are worthy, you are worthy, Lord, you are worthy. Worthy you are worthy, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, seated. At the right hand of the Father, you were worthy. 
Worthy you are worthy, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. Seated at the right hand of the Father, you are worthy, you worthy, you are worthy. Yeah, just go before the Lord and... Um, just praise him. Give thanks to the Lord for all that he has done, the protection that uh, he's given you in your family, that he has, um, despite all these issues and uh, the pandemic and the fear and everything else, that the Lord has provided for you, that the Lord has watched over you. And uh, we all have a reason to just give thanks. When you look deep, we will find a reason to say thank you. Mm. And even in our country today, and, uh, and just even this forum to just have fellowship. And I also know that uh, there are a number of initiatives is being undertaken to take care of our own at this time. Can we give thanks for God has touched lives, has touched people to reach out and be able to help out. So Lord, we give thanks for this day. We are grateful for all that you have done. We thank you for every person in our community, O oh God, that you've washed over. And we know, Lord, that your protection is upon us. Um, as you walk around, Lord, in your word, you say that you are blessed as you go out and even as you come in. And today what we say, Lord, is that as we go out and as we come in, Lord, we have seen your protection being upon us, O oh God. And you know, Lord, um, as we pray uh, in line with Psalms 91, Lord, we, we, we find shelter in your hand. We find refuge, Lord, under your wings. And you know that, Lord, even at this time, O oh God, you know what is best for us, Lord, and you will do it, O oh God, in accordance to your will. Even for those who may have relatives who have been found to be positive, O oh God, or even have relatives and friends who are in quarantine. Today, Lord, we pray for peace. Peace upon them, Lord. For, Lord, you are worthy. You are seated at your throne. Even at this moment when we things are just seem to be getting out of hand, Lord, we know that you're still seated on the throne and you still reign and you still rule. And it is your will, Lord, that prevails. It's your will, Lord, that continues to prevail. And we pray, Lord, at this time that we'll be able to discern and be able to know what it is that you're communicating. Take away fear from our hearts, Lord. Take away anxiety, O oh God. And let our faith, Lord, grow at this time. Let our hope, Lord, be revived again. For you are worthy to receive praise. You're worthy to receive glory and honor, Lord. Be glorified and be magnified. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I hope you're engaging in prayer. Let's continue to pray and trust in God for his healing upon our country, for his healing upon our own people. There are people who may be sick from other diseases and uh, just going to the hospital is a scare. Just continue to pray. Whatever need you have, take this opportunity to just pray about it. Worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy, worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you, say worthy. Worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy, you're worthy, Lord, worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. 
You are worthy, Lord, worthy. You are worthy, King of kings, Lord of oh lords. You are worthy, Lamb of God, worthy. You were worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. King of kings, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. King of kings, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. Amen. Welcome all to our service today. May you be blessed. May you be blessed more and more. Thank you all. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Revelation 5, 9, You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seals and open it. For you were slaughtered, and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Father, in Jesus' name this morning, we are very grateful because... You have given us the lamb and the lion who is worthy to open the seals, Lord, who is worthy to be worshipped, who is worthy to be exalted, who is worthy, Lord, to be depended on, who is worthy, Lord, to be trusted. And this morning we give him and, and to you, Lord, all the glory and honor. Your first of the last, the beginning, the end, your Alpha and Omega, your God who was, God who is, and God to come. We worship you this morning and we exalt you. We acknowledge that there is no one like you. There is no one who has ever been like you. There is no one who will ever be like you. And so, Lord, we give you praise and we give you all the honor, Jehovah. Lord, we thank you because you are all-knowing, all-powerful, and you are everywhere, Lord. Lord, you know everything before it happens, Jehovah. I thank you because you are there before the beginning. You are there. Uh, in this season and you will be there even after this season and so lord we give you praise and we give you the honor jehovah we are grateful because you you are faithful you are just and you are loving we can depend on you every season lord we can lord rest knowing that you are carrying us through we can rest knowing that you can be trusted we we, we, we are rest we, 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 we can rest lord and just know that all is well because you're with us, Lord. You're not malicious. The Lord, you just watch us suffer. But Lord, you are a good God. You are the best for us. You think the best for us, Lord. And Lord, you, your plans for our lives are the, are the best plans that you can ever think of or even have. And so Lord, even as we continue, Lord, to trust in you, Lord, in this season, Lord, um, Lord, we give you thanks because we know that you, we know that you are carrying us through, Lord. And you know that even when we are discouraged, Lord, in this season, when we don't understand what is happening, when, Lord, um, we are just in fear, when, Lord, um, we are trusting you for provision, Lord, we don't know how, this, how long this season will last, Lord. We know that you can be trusted and you know that you are doing something and you are at work. And so, Lord, we ask you to consume us with your presence, Lord. Those times that you are discouraged, Lord, in this season, encourage us, Lord. Those times, the Lord, we are emotionally down, Lord, carry us through, Lord. It's already, uh, it's already two months, Lord, since COVID started, Lord, and, and things, things, Lord, are not the same again. We don't know how this, how this, um, how long this will take, but Lord, we know that. You know how long it will take and you know what you are doing. Lord, what are you teaching us in this season? What are you teaching us in this season? This moment, I encourage you to ask the Lord what is teaching you in this, in this season. I encourage you to, 
to worship him. I encourage you to, to tell him that you trust him. I encourage you to tell him what is in your heart. What are you feeling today? Uh, what are you feeling this morning? Are you feeling discouraged? Tell him you're discouraged. Are you learning something new? Tell him that you're learning something new. What do you want? What are you feeling this morning? Talk to the Lord and tell him what you're feeling this morning. And so Lord, this morning, I ask you, the Lord, you teach us what you are doing, Lord. Open our eyes to see what you are doing. Open our eyes, Jesus. Open our eyes just to God. Faithful God. Loving God. Tell us what you are doing this season. Lord, we ask for strength. We ask for wisdom, Lord. I commit and different families that are represented here today to you, Jehovah. And I ask the Lord to meet every family. Lord, you know what is happening in those families, Jehovah. You know how marriages are in this season, Jehovah. You know how parenting it is in this season, Jehovah. You know how financial life, Lord, is, is in this season, Lord. You know how career-wise um, things are in this season, Lord. You know everyone in this forum today, how they are doing. And so, Lord, I commit each and every one of us to you. And Lord, I ask you to show us the Lord. You are still in control. I know some of us, Lord, are doubting. Some of us, Lord, um, discouraged. Come through, Lord, and show us, Lord, who you are. Reveal yourself to us. Reveal yourself to us, Lord. We need you. We need you. And we are desperate for you. But, Lord, you know that you are worthy. We know that, Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy to open the seals. You are worthy, Lord. And so since you are worthy, Lord, you are you you can't be dependent and so we depend on you this morning and ask you to lead us and ask you to carry us through this season jehovah lord you are grateful because you know that you are doing something good so lord teach us even to worship in this season teach us lord to lift you up T teach us lord to honor you and to live for you thank you because you love us and thank you because you are doing something new in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all this morning. We trust that you are well and the Lord has been good to you. It's good to see you, Pastor Katale, over there. God bless you. Shout out to you. Shout out to those who are following us on Facebook. Uh, we are trusting that um, wherever you are at, whatever your circumstances, that everything will be sub subject to the Lordship of Christ because he's far above every power, every principalities, every ruler in the present age and in the age to come. He still sits on the throne and he is worthy of our praises uh, today. Uh, we continue with the study that we've been having in the book of Revelation. Uh, hopefully we've been able to demystify the book of Revelation and made it a book uh, that attracts us and interests us um, to go in because it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Uh, so today we have uh, the second uh, sermon by Pastor Omondi and uh, we are looking at the seals. Uh, so um, just sit back, um, interact with the word and enjoy what God has prepared for you as a meal this morning. Karibuni sana, whatever you might be. It is good to fellowship with you again this morning. We could be far apart, but united by the Spirit of God and through the sacrifice of the Lamb. Thank you all for joining us from whichever place and you know whatever platform you're joining in from. Could be Facebook or Zoom. May God enrich you with His truth and His love. My name is Eric Omondi, married to Mary Mwikali, and together we are leading a beautiful community of faith at Lifespring Chapel, Kamulu. We bless the Lord for each one of these beautiful people. Now, one of the things, to be very honest with you, that I miss in this season is the common phrase of turn to your neighbor and give them a high five and tell them it is so good to have you in church today. I wonder if we can still do that. But anyway, Corona will surely pass 
and we come back to our normal lives, what we used to know, but having learned great lessons, even as we'll be moving forward uh, away from Corona. We continue on with our journey through the book of Revelation. And today uh, I'll be focusing on chapter six all the way to, to chapter eight, verse five there. It's called to do not be afraid then becomes very important to us. We do not need to be afraid of this book because this book is far from the intention of making us afraid. John writes from what, what he saw as a first-hand witness, okay? And right from the beginning in chapter 1 verse 17, he's asked not to be afraid. And this through the book of Revelation is actually supposed to be exciting and fun. And this is because it reveals Christ, the author and the finish of our faith to us and things regarding his plan, God's plan in that which has passed, that which is happening at the moment and that which is yet to come. And this call to do not be afraid then becomes very important to us. We do not need to be afraid of this book because this book is far from the intention of making us afraid. John writes from what, what he saw as a first-hand witness, okay? And right from the beginning in chapter 1 verse 17, he's asked not to be afraid. And these words, I believe, apply to us today as we interact with the book of Revelation. Real quick, the book of Revelation was anticipated by Jesus before he died when he declared that the Holy Spirit will show the apostles things to come in John chapter 16 verse 13. And the teachings on end times, which are called the eschatological teachings by the apostles Paul and Peter, reveals a bit about these predictions, but there is a sense of complete fulfillment of Jesus' prediction through Apostle Paul, Apostle John rather, on the island of Patmos. Last week, we looked at the scene in the throne room and we were amazed, I believe, at how the main character of the book, Christ himself is revealed as the ruler of the universe, the lion of the tribe of Judah. And as the lamb that was slain for the sins of the world, the redeemer of the world, we saw that it is through him being the sacrifice that his authority and power is made perfect. And you also saw how the heavenly beings bow in worship to the Christ and the Father. In that same scene, we saw how Christ took the scroll to open it and break the seals of judgment. He alone was worthy to do this. No one on earth, no one in heaven, no one under the earth is worthy to open this scroll and break the seals in this scroll except Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain. And so today, we look at these seals, okay? And I pray that indeed God will speak to us as we interact with, with each one of them. The seven seals. The number seven is very prominently used in the book of Revelation. There are seven churches, seven candles, seven stars, seven letters, seven spirits, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven thunders, seven heads, seven angels, seven bowls or vials, seven mountains, and seven blessings. And it is largely believed that when this number is given symbolic interpretation, it represents completeness or completion and perfection. Now, these seven seals represent the beginning of Christ's judgment of the, of the unbelievers of the earth during the predicted time, the period of tribulation. So that means then that these are signs of that which is to come because I believe, and as the scriptures reveal, the day of judgment is not yet here with us. So these judgments are quite similar to the predictions of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 to 31. The purpose of this judgment is basically to punish the unbelievers for their sins and rejection of Christ and to bring the remnant 
to faith in Jesus Christ. Let's look at the first seal. This first seal we see it in chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3. And as the Bible says, this seal introduces a white horse. And he who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him. And he went out conquering and to conquer. Now, this seal initiates the worldwide conquest by the Antichrist. But before I talk a little bit about the Antichrist, you see, this kind of describes to us how God allows people to lead in different, you know, uh, capacities. Today we know of presidents, you know, and different kinds of leaders. And the Bible tells us very well that there is no leadership, no authority given except that is from God. No one allows people to take leadership positions. And this is, in a way, an explanation of how people are allowed to lead, okay? And to, to just conquer or te different territories. But talking about the Antichrist, in this case, he comes on a white horse. And of course, as we read, our first impulse is to think it must be Christ. This is Christ, right? That's what we we'll think. But as we inspect closely, we however realize that this is not true. The rider in this first seal had a bow, but with no arrows. He also had a crown of victory, but not of royalty. So he's some kind of a leader coming to conquer, but not Christ. It will be good to notice that he's, the rider of this horse is like Christ. He's described like Christ in chapter 19, verse 11, but he has no weapon. He has a bow, but no arrows. He only relies on deception. That is the weapon he uses. He's very likely to, to be he's very likely uh, to be the same rider Daniel describes in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. He will be the, the final gentle world ruler according to Revelation 13, 1, 7. So this guy really relies on deception. That is his weapon. He uses deception to, to have influence all over the world. The second seal. This seal is, we see it in chapter 6, verse 3 to 4. And it describes another horse, fairy red, that went out. And it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. And that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. Now, this seal brings war and takes away peace from the earth. The sword here represents conflict by Amari. And it is very possible that the attacks on Israel mentioned in Ezekiel 38 and 39 and Daniel 10, 40, 40 to 44 are in view. The staggering violence that this seal unleashes on the earth may make it seem like God has lost control. But instead, it is him who allows it to happen. God still rules. We have experienced violence in this country or you have experienced violence of some kind yourself. Do you remember what happened in the year 2007 20, and 2008? The post-election violence? Yes, even in that case, God who gives peace had allowed this country to enjoy peace, but he had taken it away. He is sovereign. The third seal, we find it uh, in chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. And this seal is described uh, with with a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying a quarter a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not harm the oil and the, and the, and the wine. Now this third seal as mentioned in Matthew chapter 24 verse 7 mentions um, rather brings or depicts a sense of famine and inflation. The balances and scales here are in relation to the activities of trade and business. And the word penny, which is translated of as denarius, represented about a day's wages. And in today's context, I would give it an average of, let's say, cash 500. 
So a measure of wheat, which is like a quarter, would cost about 500 bob. Wheat and barley were considered a necessity, just like it is with us, you know, with, with maize flour. Can you imagine buying your quarter measure of maize flour at 500 bob? What I think in this seal, God is reminding us that he is the provider. It is never about how hard we work or how witty and crafty we can be, he supplies. Some of us are afraid that such a thing could happen during this pandemic. Truth is, governments are worried about their country's provision, but God is in control. He's seated on the throne. The command to the rider to not have the oil and the wine in, in verse 6 may indicate a restriction on the effects of the famine in this early part of tribulation. And this is an act of grace and mercy from God. The fourth seal is described with a horse, uh, with a horse that is, let me see how the color here. So I looked and behold a pale horse and the name of him who sat on it was death. That is the fourth seal. So this seal brings death to fourth, a fourth of the population through all famine and pestle, just as it is described in Luke chapter 21 verse 11. Now death in this seal takes lives. Many people die, but heads hold these lives for judgment that is coming. So judgment still continues when we are just, when we are at seal number four. The fifth seal, this seal, as we see it in, in, in chapter, um, chapter six, verse nine to 11, this seal represents the martyrdom of tribulation saints throughout the world. These saints will come to faith in Christ following the rapture. And, may, and many will be killed by the satanic opposition because of their testimony of Christ. Reading this and thinking about it, I pray that no one I know would wait to receive Christ at this point when there is time and opportunity right now. These matters in this seal plead for God's judgment upon the oppressors who are believed to be Antichrist, the Antichrist and his followers. Now, godly people have always died for the faith, beginning with Abel in Genesis chapter 4 verse 8, to Antipas, who we just read about recently in Revelation 2.13. And many unnamed matters, including this, at the end of time. Sometimes God requires that his people sacrifice their lives for him. He's not asking us for something he wouldn't do himself. He gave his son. He gave himself to die as a sacrifice, a perfect atonement for our sins. Christ clearly asks us to carry our cross to follow him in Matthew 16, 24. And he also says that we will at times suffer because of him in John 15 and 21 and Matthew 10, verse 22. You have chosen Christ and that doesn't mean you will always have it easy. You and I will suffer in different forms in our journey of faith and it pleases God to see his people holding on faithfully to the very end. Doesn't he promise that blessed are those who hold on to faith to the very end, not turning away from it. The white robes de described here depict these matters, uh, Russia's stand before God and the response they are given for their pleading suggests that more saints will be martyred because there is more tribulation to come. There are still more people to die. The sixth seal, as you see it in chapter 6, verse 12 to 14, this seal brings natural disaster of different kinds. The earth and the heavenly bodies will go into convulsion. Now, Matthew 24, verse 7 and 28 describes some, something quite similar to this. In Joel 2, 30 to 31 also predicts many of these judgments as signs of the day of the Lord. This is what the Bible says in verse 14. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid himself in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the heavens being rolled up just like you roll up your own carpet? For cleaning 
some of these things described here are unimaginable. But the more I want to try and understand, the more I tell myself, wow, these are things that only God can do and no one can do. And that is where I want to, to, to just stay at and not cracking my head to try and understand all these things, but just marvel at the sovereignty of God. Can you imagine stars falling as if you're shaking a ripe, you know, a, a mango tree with, filled with many ripe mango trees and you're shaking it and they're all falling down. These are things that you and I can only imagine, but only God can cause them to happen. Now, before we transition to the next seal, the, the seventh seal, there is an interlude, a parenthesis that comes in between, and that is the entire chapter, chapter seven. And this acts as, as a break in the chronology of Revelation. It shows us uh, God's grace and salvation during this period of judgment. The winds that are mentioned in this chapter, uh, the first verses of this chapter, symbolize God's judgment on the earth. And the four angels that are straining or stopping the winds are straining agents who hold back God's judgment until God's special servants are sealed. Now, there are people who are called special servants, God's people who are introduced in this chapter. And it is possible that this interview looks back to before the six seals are broken by the Lamb, only him who is worthy to break the seals in that sin. So that when the first sin begins, these servants have been sealed. Now the seal here shows ownership and protection. And this compares to the last plague God released on Egypt. His chosen people were to have what equals a seal. The doorpost so that, uh, at their doorpost. So that when the angel of death came, their homes will be passed over. And that is how their firstborn sons were spared because of a seal. Okay. This chapter also introduces a number that has raised a lot of controversy in interactions with the book of Revelation. The number 144,000. This number represents all the tribes of Israel. And all these 12 tribes who would have returned from exile during this time of tribulation come in play. And as God has always spoken of his people and always taking note of a remnant, there would always be a remnant for God's chosen people, the Israelites. And they will come, 144,000, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, just as it is promised in the future is, uh, restoration in Isaiah chapter 11 and Ezekiel chapter 37. Now, this... Israelites will come in play for a specific role. It is believed that during this duration of tribulation, these people will be the ones who will preach to those who will be living. And there are those who will accept. As you've just read about the martyrs, there are those who will still be martyred because they would accept the gospel. Now, remember this happens after rapture. Okay, So you should ask yourself, so who will be preaching to these people? who will not have believed in Christ up to this point. It is this 144 people. And they are believed to be the light that will shine, okay, before those who do not believe, those who will be living at that given time. And that is how the Bible transitions and speaks to us about a multitude that will, will be seen as those who are among God's people. Many Gentiles will believe, will be saved during this time of tribulation through the evangelistic ministry of this sealed, the 144,000 representing the Israelite tribes, okay? And this will be the agents of converting these who will end up being martyrs, who will die because of accepting Christ. Their white robes depict a standing of righteousness before God. And they do, and they, they, are, they are shown as a multitude that bows before the Lord in praise with symbol of victory and joy, just as the Jews used during their festive se uh, seasons in verse 9, using the palms. Okay, and now we transition to the seventh seal, 
which we'll not look into deeply, but we'll just look at the introduction because it introduces, you know, seven trumpets and we can't look at all that right now. Okay. But the silence in the first verses, the silence that we see in the first verses of chapter 8 is the kind that indicates the beginning of a further series of judgment. It is like that break, you know, news reporters take to sip some water, then come back with another series of news. Or that break we used to take, or the footballers take after the first half, and then come back for another 45 minutes or so of play. Now, two things that I find very astonishing for me um, in this cell, in the introduction of this cell, are one, the introduction of the incense. This is always an illustration of prayer, as you can see in chapter 5, verse 8. The trumpet judgment may be God's response to the prayers of the saints in chapter 6 and verse 10. And the second thing is the throwing of the censer. And this for me depicts the coming judgment on the earth. The angels are used to administer the judgment of the trumpets, with each of the trumpets symbolizing a specific execution of God's judgment. Now, let's put a comma there and be interested to learn more about the seven trumpets next Sunday. Okay, but for now, let's just put a comma there and, and chew on what we have just uh, had today, even as we continue interacting with, with this book. You can go back and read that uh, those chapters again and interact with those six seals, uh, you know, and, and part of the seventh seal. But for now, let's just put a comma there. But before I make a prayer, this is what I find as lessons from these seals. One, I see God depicting himself as, you know, a just God. He's just. And that he will not let sin go unpunished. He takes note of every sin and he will punish it. God has always punished sin. If you walk through his love story, the Bible, you will see how he dealt with people who sinned, and especially those who did not repent. He will always punish sin. And he does that with us even today. Secondly, I see a loving and gracious father. Even though at this point his judgment will be due, he still shows mercy. His mercy and grace are available even now. How we respond to his mercy and grace is what determines whether we will have his seal or not. The third thing I see is a sovereign ruler. God rules over the universe, allowing both good and bad to happen, all according to his will. And lastly, I see a faithful God. He's a covenant keeper. And truly, truly, as he says in his word, that all that we see will come to pass, except his word. In the fullness of time, this will be true. Let's pray. Lord, breathe life into your word that you've spoken to us. And may it live within us to change our hearts to change our minds, O oh God, and draw us to you. My desire, Father, is that we'll be counted among those who would have your seal, O oh God. My desire is that, Father, when you come to take your charge, we will be part of it, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that even though we face challenges, even though we may suffer in this time and age, O oh God, may we continue to hold on to this faith and put our hope and trust in you and finding consolation and joy in the promise that you will wipe all our tears and we will know no sorrow, no pain, oh God, and we will know no mourning, dear Lord. We pray that as we continue to interact with your word, oh God, Father, may it draw us even closer to you. Take away Every, oh God, every fear within us, Lord Jesus, that the enemy could strike us, oh God, with as we interact with your word. Instead, may we see lines of love, oh God, as we open these pages of the Bible, Lord Jesus, 
and interact with your truth. And may we respond, oh God, in acceptance to that love. Bless us, oh God, with that promise of blessing, even as we read this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Omondi, for, for that word. Thank you for uh, taking the time to hear the Lord and for patiently reading and uh, leading us through uh, the seals and making them, you know, uh, clear and understandable to us. God bless you. Um, there's going, um, there's a scripture slide, um, on. It says, give and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your life, into your lap, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. We used to sing a song based on this, on this verse, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a joyful song, it's a song about giving. But I've had misconceptions about it. I, as I was preparing to, to share today, I read the verses that come before Luke chapter 6, verse 38. And they speak about generosity. And the question that Christ seems to be asking is what do you do if a real enemy is in need? If a real enemy, not just, this is not someone who is lying to you, this is not someone who is trying to swindle you. When a real enemy is in need, what do you do? Are we only generous to those who deserve it and ungenerous to those who do not deserve it? Are we merciful to only those who deserve it and unmerciful to those who deserve it? And Christ is telling us, according to the pattern that Christ has set before us, that if we want to be true representatives, of the gospel. We have to be those who are generous, even to those who do not deserve it. In this segment of stewardship, we, we talk about not just uh, giving offering, but life stewardship. What, what, what about our giving? Not just giving of our offering, but giving towards people needs. What about our giving? Does our giving um, talk about Christ? Does our giving uh, show that we know Christ? And the verse 37 says, do not judge. After talking about people in need, after talking about uh, being generous, even to people who do not deserve it, uh, Jesus says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Pardon and you will be pardoned. And we ourselves have been in that position. We've been in positions where Christ is right to condemn us. Christ is right to judge us. Christ, um, there's no reason for him to pardon us. But God has pardoned us because Christ came. If Christ had given himself to us because of our sense of deserve, deservingness or because of our goodness, then none of us would be worthy of the gift that he has given us. So today, as we think about giving, um, when we give our offering, that is just one way of giving. I know that in your circles, you're coming across uh, people who are in need. And the biggest question that I feel that the Lord is asking us, if you meet someone who is an enemy, an enemy of the church, who is in real need, what are we going to do about it? When we meet someone who uh, is not living right and we are tempted to judge, what are we going to do about it? In these days when um, economies and, and incomes are being turned upside down, we find those who had an income finding themselves without an income. Those with... Uh, and, and you as a believer might find yourself in a position where um, someone is in need, someone who, is, who has not been friendly, someone who's been 
actually against you, what are you going to do about it? Jesus says, if, if they slap you on one side, give them the other side. If they want your shirt, give them including your tunic. So the attitude towards giving that the Lord is calling us to is a very radical one. And there is no season uh, like this season where Christ is calling us to, to wake up, to wake up to the need around us, to wake up to um, even to people whom we have not thought that we could ever give. When you see an enemy uh, in need, you, you think it really is none of my business. After all, they're your enemies. But Christ is saying that even that one who is your enemy, when they are in need, even that one who cannot repay you when they are in need, that for us to show his real mercy, in fact, he says, be merciful because your, God, your, your father is merciful. Verse 35, and you will be the sons of the most high for he himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. So our giving, let's allow our giving, not just in offering, but even in to your neighbor, to relatives, let our giving show that we know the Lord, that Lord, we are following after the pattern of our God who is merciful to even those who do not deserve it. There are details for giving that are before you. We want to take time and say thank you for giving towards the, um, the food bank, towards the needs within our immediate community. We want to thank God that as of yesterday, uh, 41 families had been, had accessed food. 45 families had accessed food through your giving. And we praise God. And may the Lord bless you. We also want to thank God that these 45 families represent 186 individuals. We have continued to pray that this giving will translate not just to filling of the body and averting hunger, but also to transformation. And we praise God uh, that we are able to give in this way. We're praying that those who receive these gifts and those who give these gifts will meet together before the Lord and that Lord will be glorified um, by those who give and by those who receive. So let's pray before we give. Lord, we pray that the giving we give, not just in offering, but even in life around us, clothes, food, time, that Lord, we will reflect your mercy, that we will reflect that we are children of a merciful God. And Lord, we pray where our hearts are hardened, where we feel that we, uh, we do not owe an enemy help, that Lord, you will change our hearts, that Lord, you will help us to clothe ourselves with the mercy that comes from you. Lord, we also want to thank you for the giving of your people, that your people have given and that your people have received. And all this is to the praise and to the glory of your name. We also want to thank you for the ministries that have continued to happen because of the giving of your people. And Lord, we want to praise you and worship you. We want to thank you for families that you have provided for. We also want to thank you for families that may be struggling and pray that in all this situation, oh Lord, you may show us, you may come through for each and every one of our families, for each and every one that um, is at Life Spring, for each and every one joining us and hearing us today, that Lord, you will meet them at their point of needs, that Lord, you will use them to meet the needs of those around them, oh God, that Lord, in all things, we all would not lack in any way. Lord, we know that it has taken your hand for these gifts that have been given. 
Lord, we pray that, Lord, it will take your hand um, for even those who are struggling to come forward and receive, that, Lord, they will not struggle anymore, that, Lord, your grace will be upon them, that, Lord, if there's any one of us who is struggling to come forward and to say that they need, that, Lord, you would cover them, oh, Lord, that, Lord, they will not suffer in silence and in shame alone, and that, Lord, there will be provision for them too, O oh Lord. We will thank you, Lord, uh, that, Lord, you have continued to sustain us, not just physically, but even spiritually. I pray that, Lord, you will renew our strength in this season and cause us to continue to walk and to run and to do the things that we need to do, all to the praise and to the glory of your name. Because we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.